Today I talk about movie tie-in games and why they're usually terrible. All on today's Stuff That Sucks. So we all know that just by now, movie games are terrible, but apparently a lot of people don't understand that because they keep making them. And they keep making them because gamers are continually buying them. So first of all, stop buying shitty games. One, don't buy shitty games. Uh, read reviews on it first, you know, go to shacknews.com, see our review of it, see if it's any good, and if it's like a one out of 10 or a two out of 10 or a three out of 10, don't bother, skip it. Even if you really wanna play it, just skip it because that's how you get better games. Just like how you get better movies. You know, if you don't go see a movie, then they learn that, oh, this formula doesn't work, and then they change and try to adapt. Although it's a little easier for that formula to work with film because they can make millions of dollars on shitty movies where shitty games can make nothing, and then they can just have a studio go under. I wanted to talk about this because they had a Ghostbuster game come out uh, that incurred with, with the movie. I'm not here to talk about the movie. I'm here to talk about the game. I don't want to talk about the movie. I'm not going to tell you why I hated it or loved it or thought it was average. It doesn't matter. I just want to talk about the game. Must fight Satan. Make it up to him later. <sighs> so the game um, was actually really interesting. I did play the game and it had a lot of really good ideas going for it. I mean, it had an interesting story. It had some of my favorite mechanics, which is the top-down uh, scrolling, I guess they call them stick shooters. Uh, I love those types of games. Diablo, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, any game that's a top-down where you're just grinding and killing multiple, I, I love that. I think it's a really good mechanic. I don't think we see enough of those games. Anyway, so the game is obviously bad. It's it's a really bad game. It There's a lot of things that are wrong with it. It's It feels... It feels cheap, it feels rushed, it feels incomplete. Now, there are a lot of factors that come into that when people release a game. The majority of tying games are bad for the reason that most of them are bad to begin with is time. Studios aren't given enough time to complete a game. Uh, I'm gonna use Ghostbusters the video game again because it's really recent. And that game, I believe, had a turnaround of eight months. Now, you gotta consider eight months of starting off with absolutely nothing and then going into physical, you know, production of the disc and shipping it out and doing all that stuff from point A to point Z in eight months is such a small amount of time. So this game was made in eight months and the studio that did it is now bankrupt. They went under. They said they were gonna take the project. They ended up taking the project. They released it. The game sold poorly, go figure. And now they're under because they can't pay back the debt they took. So what can we learn from this? What can future game developers learn from movie tying games? I think the most important thing is give the developer more time to work. Eight months, I don't think, is a long enough time period to get a game out. Even with one as basic as a concept as Ghostbusters, which is a top-down shooter, it needed more time to bake. There were a lot of really good core ideas in that game. It, and like I said, it was an interesting art style. They tried to tell a story, and I liked the gameplay mechanics, but Stuff was broken, the hit detection was off, the game was short, the game was buggy. The last boss, you can literally beat the last boss without moving. You just go in the corner and he can't even hit you. you go to the corner! Yeah, Let's see if we found a glitch. A glitch. Go to the corner. All you had to do was go to the corner of the level. Did nobody fucking test this game? There was stuff that wasn't done, and it was mainly because the studio did not have enough time to polish and make the game that probably they wanted to make. Game time movies just are usually terrible. And once in a while, you get a good one. Uh, the only one I can think of right now is Spider-Man 2. It was on the GameCube, Xbox, and PS2, I believe, and it was fantastic. And I think it was because there was a combination of things. One, the studio knew what they were doing. Two, they had ample time to build a game. And three, they had minimal studio interference. But anyway, guys, tie-in movie games suck. And sometimes it's not necessarily the developer's fault. Um, I guess it, you can check it to the developer's fault because, you know, they took on the project when they knew they only had eight months to do it. But maybe, you know, maybe this they think they can do a really good job at the time and they don't realize how big of a pain in the ass the studio is going to be and they end up making something like Ghostbusters the video game. Anyway guys, the point of the matter is, read reviews, stop buying games that suck, and studios will stop making quick cash tying games. Alright?
So for more videos like this and everything else gaming related, you're already in the right place. You're on shacknews.com.